you feel swelling in your neck with thyroid area, maybe you're having symptoms of fatigue, or maybe you got some thyroid lab results back and you're wondering, how to diagnose Hashimoto's disease? My name is Dr. Terranella, and in this video, we're going to look at that question, what specific lab tests you need to diagnose Hashimoto's, and some of the different ways it can present itself to give you a better understanding of how we actually make the diagnosis. So again, my name is Dr. Terranella, and if you're new to this channel, I just want you to know that I'm making these videos to help you get a better understanding of what's going on with your health, whether it's a confusing lab test, symptom, or diagnosis, make these videos to help you go beyond the basics of your health. So if you like this kind of information on nutrition, health, lab tests, hormones, et cetera, click on the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get more videos like this one. Now for a quick disclaimer, the information in this video is for informational purposes only. It's not intended as a treatment for any health condition or as a substitute for seeing an actual doctor or medical profession. It should be used as an educational guide to deeper your understanding of your own health and treatment success. If medical attention is needed, don't delay in seeking that attention. All right, let's look at how to diagnose Hashimoto's disease. Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at how to diagnose Hashimoto's disease, also known as Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So if you don't know, Hashimoto's disease is also known as chronic lymphocytic thyroiditis, and it's those lymphocytes, those are types of white blood cells that are inflaming the thyroid gland. It is by nature an autoimmune disorder, so those lymphocytes are attacking the thyroid gland. In the U.S. and other developed nations, this is the most common cause of hypothyroidism or underactive thyroid. The thyroid gland is a small butterfly-shaped gland that sits right in the neck here and it produces thyroid hormones like T3 and T4. So when we want to diagnose Hashimoto's thyroiditis or Hashimoto's disease, we need to look at both the thyroid function and the autoimmune activity. Now it's also important to look at certain signs and symptoms in the body. And so we do want to do a thorough intake and understand what kind of symptoms the person may be having. I did do a separate video on symptoms of Hashimoto's if you want to check those out. But one of the most common is fatigue. And as far as physical exam and signs, well, a lot of that's going to be done through the blood test, which we're going to discuss in a second. But sometimes you can also feel nodules along the thyroid gland as well. And that may be an indicator that you have something going on with the thyroid and might have Hashimoto's as well. So the test we do to look at the thyroid functionality is both the TSH, which is also known as thyroid stimulating hormone, and T3 and T4, which are the thyroid hormone output from the thyroid gland. Most of what the thyroid produces is T4, so that's one of the more important ones to get a measurement of. But both T3 and T4 can be low, and so it's good to measure both. You also want to measure the free or bioavailable versions of these tests because that's going to give you more of an indicator of what the active amount of thyroid hormone is. So high levels of TSH and low levels of either T3 or T4 can be an indicator of hypothyroidism. And this is really common with Hashimoto's. The presence of the high TSH or low T3 and T4 isn't really enough, though, to diagnose Hashimoto's. You can have hypothyroidism without Hashimoto's. While we're on the note of hypothyroidism, depending on how high that TSH is and how low that T3 and T4 are, is going to determine how we move forward with treatment. And I also discuss that in another video on thyroid lab tests. So now on to the autoimmune part of diagnosing Hashimoto's. So when you're looking at lab tests for the diagnosis of the autoimmune part of this, you want to be looking at something known as antithyroid peroxidase or anti-TPO antibody, which is the most commonly used to diagnose Hashimoto's. And then sometimes we'll also use thyroglobulin. Now, the anti-TPO antibody is the most common because that's actually interfering with the production of the thyroid hormone itself, where the antithyroglobulin has more to do with the transport of the thyroid hormone. But both are indicators of autoimmune disease. So they need to be above a certain level in order to make that diagnosis. Some of us have a little bit of this in our body, even though we don't have enough of it to actually trigger a positive test result. But when they are high above that threshold, that's when you're said to have Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Now, it's also possible for you to have Hashimoto's antibodies in your blood and not have hypothyroidism. 
meaning the levels of TSH, T3, and T4 all look really good. Not even close, they just look really good. Still, if you have the autoimmune component, meaning those autoantibodies are present, still means your immune system is interfering with the production of that thyroid hormone. And because that interference is inconsistent or not constant all the time, it can be fluctuating. And that means the level of thyroid hormone that your body's producing can also be fluctuating. So that when you actually check your blood, you may have different levels than a day later when perhaps those levels are lower or even higher. So if your symptoms seem to fluctuate a lot, it may be important to get multiple serial tests before you make a decision on what's going on in terms of starting thyroid hormone. An ultrasound can also be used to image the thyroid, basically bouncing some sound waves off the thyroid and gives you a better understanding of whether or not there's nodules there for one, which can be an indicator of inflammation in the thyroid gland. So how do we diagnose Hashimoto's disease? Well, the diagnosis is typically going to be made through combination of lab testing, which is thyroid function, and also the lab testing that looks at the autoimmune antibodies. This in combination with symptoms is how we diagnose Hashimoto's disease. So how did I do? Hopefully you got a better understanding of how to diagnose Hashimoto's disease. If you do have other questions on this topic, or maybe you just have other questions in general, drop it in the comment section. I'll do my best to answer your questions. Thank you again for watching. We'll see you next time.